class, I recommend having a chair or something available to hold on to for balance or to put your leg up on. And we're going to start down on the ground with two blocks, one for each butt cheek. We're gonna sit on those two blocks. And sit crisscross applesauce. <clears throat> You'll notice I'm rocking side to side. I'm lifting and separating. I'm, I'm pulling the flesh away from the bones. And I'm just gonna settle in for some Sunday morning brandy yoga. One leg in front of the other, it doesn't matter which. Palms are forward as you take a great big shoulder shrug, inhaling up and exhale back and down. Repeat, great big shoulder shrugs, great big yawns. Inhaling up, exhale back. And down. Let's repeat that a few more times. Great big shoulder shrugs, great big yawns. Inhaling up. Exhaling down. And once again, great big shoulder shrug, great big yawn. Inhaling up. And exhaling down. Now, take whatever hand. This might be your right hand. You're going to hitchhike that right shoulder onto your back. You're going to put your palm down on the floor, but then dial the hand in the direction of the pinky finger to really get that shoulder blade down on your back and hugged in close to your spine. The other hand, that might be your left hand, comes up and overhead into a side stretch. Now, my bottom elbow can bend a bit. I am going to push into the floor to make sure those left side ribs are flared. And if you turn to look up towards the top armpit, take a whiff, make sure you put on deodorant this morning. You want that armpit turned towards your face. I'm going to take this top arm, drop it down by your hip, and then palm shines forward as you toss up and around. So palm down once in front, palm up when it's behind. Big arm circles. Circling around and around. And if you're just now joining me, make sure you are muted so that you don't accidentally become a YouTube star today. Great big shoulder shrugs. Uh, shoulders are shrugged down your back. Great big yawn like breaths. Circling that arm around and around. And then we're going to reverse that direction. Again, palm is down when it's forward. And turn your palm up when it's behind you. Palm down in front, palm up behind. Bottom elbow can be unlocked, bottom shoulder shrugged away from your ear. Big side stretch and arm circles. And then release that left arm down by your side. Reach the fingertips down towards the ground, let your head hang. And if it's all good, you can nod, yes, letting your head hang to one side. Nod, yes. And we'll shove off and do the same thing on the other side. So again, shoulders shrugged onto your back. You're gonna put your palm down on the floor and dial it in the direction of the pinky finger to really get that shoulder blade under your back. Right arm up and over, big side stretch, pushing into the bottom hand so those right ribs flare, and then arm circles. Palm down when it's in front, palm up when it's behind. Head hanging off to one side. Big circles. Big yawn breaths. Couple more circles here, and then you'll just reverse the direction and arm circle the other way. Check in with that bottom shoulder, make sure it's down and away from your ear. That bottom elbow is still bent, head is hanging off to one side. And we'll just turn this into a neck stretch by taking that top hand, reaching down diagonal through the fingers, letting your head hang and nod, yes. It all made sense for you. And coming to center, shoving off, sitting up. Gonna recross, put the other leg in front. Again, you are sitting on those blocks. Your sit bones are spread, palms are forward. Great big shoulder shrug up, back and down. 
Once again, this right shoulder shrugs onto your back, palm is on the floor, and you're dialing it in the direction of the pinky finger, getting that shoulder blade underneath your heart. Lifting this left arm up and over into a side stretch. Top armpit again, turn it towards your face. If you sniff, the armpit is towards your face. Breathing. Pushing into the bottom hand, flaring those side ribs. Take this top hand, wipe a table. Smack that table, shrug the shoulder onto your back. Continue to wipe the table off the side of your hip. Reaching down through your fingers, letting your head hang heavy. And again, shove off. And just tick tock over to the other side. Again, shoulder shrugged onto your back, dialing in the direction of the pinky finger, going for that same side stretch. Pushing into the bottom hand to flare out those right side ribs. Armpit turned towards your face. Taking this right hand, wiping that table, smack the table, shrug the shoulder onto your back, keep it there. As you wipe the table off the side of your hip, reaching down diagonal through your fingers. And shove off, come on up to center. Inhale, both arms come up and overhead. We're gonna to twist to the right. So take that right arm, left arm diagonal across, turning to look over that right shoulder. See what's going on behind you. <laughs> and inhale to center and exhale, twist the other way. And again, inhaling to center. We're gonna tip forward, come on up to hands and knees. Get rid of those blocks or move them out of the way. And you might tuck a pillow underneath your bony knees. From that hands and knees position, toes are curled under for that added foot stretch. You're gonna inhale, lift your head and tail up into that sway back cow. And then as you exhale, arch your back for cat. Inhaling for cow. And exhaling for cat. Work it out, moving back and forth through cat and cow. And the next time you exhale into that cat pose, pull that tummy in, tuck your tail, tuck your chin, arch your back dramatically, come up onto fingertips. You get to untuck your toes, bring your big toes together, back your hips up to your heels, stay up on those fingertips. Walk your hands back towards your lap to really push your hips onto your heels. And then walk both hands over to one side, it doesn't matter which, just pick a side, walk both hands over to one side and breathe, feel that side stretch. And walk both hands to center and then over to the other side. Again, you're on fingertips. You're still keeping your hips backed up onto your heels. And you are breathing into your side body, getting those side ribs to spread. And a reset coming to center. Now let's all go together. Walk both hands over to the right. Take a great big breath. Feel the left side ribs spreading. 
Locate your right hand on the floor. Push that right hand into the ground. And with an inhale, open that left side. Look up, see what's happening here. And then as you exhale, get very ticklish all of a sudden. Engage these side rib tickle muscles as if you're fending off someone who was tickling you. And round down as you exhale, press your breath out. Inhale, open, open, open. Pushing into the bottom hand. Open up into a big side stretch. And then as you exhale, pull in your front ribs. Tuck in that armpit. And inhale, open. How about two more on this side? Exhale, rounding over. Inhaling, opening up. And then you get to come to center and then over to the other side. Second verse, same as the first. Go for a big side stretch. Be up on your fingertips. And then anchor that left hand, pushing left hand into the floor. Let that right arm fly as you open, open, open with an inhale. And exhale, round down. Three, four more breaths on this side. If you think about it, it's kind of like we combined the cat and cow and that sitting seated side stretch. And when you've had three or four good deep breaths on this side, you're going to come back to neutral, back to center. All that space you've opened up in your side body, you want to maintain that as you spread your fingers wide. Curl your toes under. Lift your hips up high and back it up into your downward facing dog. Do make sure both hands, both feet are on the same surface and take your feet as wide apart as your mat. Keep them on the mat though. Take your feet as wide apart as the mat and then swish and sway your hips side to side. Your goal, your challenge, if you choose to accept it, is to pull your hips out of your armpits and continue to lengthen your side body. Letting your hips swish and sway side to side as you pedal your feet, bending one knee, then the other, picking up one heel, then the other, maybe even pivoting on the balls of your feet. Fingers are spread wide, elbows are unlocked. You might even dial your hands in the direction of the pinky fingers so the outer rims of your armpits can wrap around to your chest to give you some support. Nobody wants a saggy chest, so think about wrapping those armpits around towards your chest to keep your chest from collapsing towards the floor. Front ribs and belly are pulled in here as well. Take that dog for a nice long walk. And you get to walk your feet all the way up to your hands. And along the way, clear the deck, get rid of the pillow, and find your blocks. Blocks go underneath your hands. Again, feet as wide apart as the mat. Hands on blocks. You're going to continue swishing and swaying your hips side to side, swaying like an elephant. Starting to warm up your lower back and hips a little bit more. Don't forget to breathe. So hands on blocks or on a chair or a coffee table, whatever you have there, to give your lower back some support. And then coming to neutral, you get to bend your knees, transfer your hands up onto your lap, and with an inhale, crawl all the way on up to standing. Finish with a great big inhale, taking your arms up and overhead. And exhale, press your breath out. All right, do keep those blocks handy, but clear the deck. Nice wide mat. You might want to orient your mat so it's wide uh, along parallel to your screen so that when you take your feet wide, your feet stay on the mat. All right, going to start with your feet narrow, though. Big inhale, take arms up and overhead. And exhale, release. Inhale once again, arms up and overhead. And as you exhale, you're going to take this right leg behind you, cross the right leg behind, shooting that right arm in the air, come over into a side stretch. Knees are unlocked, right arm in the air, right leg behind. Big side stretch.
and inhale to center. Let's do the same on the other side. Crossing that left leg behind, shoot your left arm in the air and turn this into a side stretch. And inhale to center. We're gonna repeat. Take that right leg and really cross. I'm actually gonna turn to get that right leg to cross far across. And then reorient, taking that right arm up and over. And inhale to center. Left leg crosses behind. You can turn so that leg can really cross far behind. Reorient, left arm up and over. And reset. Big inhale, both arms up. Interlace your fingers. Reach down, lengthen up, standing nice and tall. Tip on over to one side. And then center and over to the other. And come to center. All right, you get to step your feet nice and wide. And do make sure, again, both feet are on the same sticky mat because it can slide if you only have one foot on it. Feet go nice and wide. You're going to turn your toes out to the side. Inhale, take your arms up and overhead. And as you exhale, slide down into a goddess squat pose. I always feel like a wacky wall walker here. So shoulders sliding down as if you were sliding down a wall. Shoulders down your back, chest is lifted. Try to be flat on the front surface of your body. That means swing your knees out even pick up your big toes. And then inhale them all the way on up and release your arms. You're going to turn all 10 toes to the right. Might want to park a block on either end of your mat. We're going to set up for our triangle pose. Inhale, arms come up and overhead. And as you exhale, tip on over into that trikonasana triangle pose. Now, hand can go on the block or on your shin. If you do put the hand on your shin, make sure you are not hyperextending or locking out the knee. Keep this knee unlocked. Leg is straight, but knee is unlocked. And here you are in your trikonasana triangle pose. Remember this top arm and arm pit. I'm gonna take this top arm pit towards your face and roll the whole side body down towards the ground. Transfer the block into that left hand. Pick up your left heel, pivot on the ball of that foot. Let me pick that block out of the way so you can see it. Pivot on the ball of the back foot. Maybe you can hop that back foot a little bit wider so it's easier to balance. Now you do have just one block on this end of the mat. That means you could put a hand on your shin, but same caution, make sure you're not hyperextending or locking out that knee. Pyramid pose, big hamstring stretch. And if you're stretching that back heel straight back, it's also a calf stretch. Three. Rise up onto the tippy toes of the back foot. Let your right knee bend. You're gonna tuck that block underneath the left knee as you set it down on the ground. And as you set that left knee down, try getting the back heel to swing wide so that you feel the outer kneecap touch down on the block. We're gonna put it on the block. Block gives you a little bit of padding. Driving your hips forward into a nice low lunge. Still got my back toes curled under. Still getting that foot stretch. It just hits your hips a little different when you have the knee elevated on a block. And keep on breathing. Now take that back leg. You're going to lift it up. Oh, block stuck to it. And you're going to pivot. So now you're going to drop the heel down. The knee is going to turn out. Hands come to the floor. Hands come to the block. And leave that block there at the end of your mat. And you're going to transition all the way around to the other side. Other block available, ready to go. For you to pick up the back heel. Tuck that back knee in narrow. Outer right kneecap touching down. Coming into your lunge. 
front foot can wiggle wide out to the side so you have length and some width between your feet. Back toes still curled under. Nice low lunge. Breathing. Back toes curled under, you're gonna lift that back leg up, find that block and park it underneath your right hand. I like to hop that back foot in a step or two. Again, that back heel swings wide as I pull the front leg straight into that pyramid. Again, this front leg is straight, but unlocked, knee is unlocked. Hand, if it is resting on your shin, is light. And breathe, pyramid pose. The hand on the shin will transfer onto the brick. That back heel will lift up and pivot in and down. Windmill up and open into your triangle pose. So if you were looking at the feet, lining up heel to heel if you're new, heel to arch if you're not so new. Hand can be on a block, either inside or outside of the foot. If you don't have a block, the hand's resting on the shin lightly, knees unlocked. Triangle pose, tri konasana. So far, so good. Go ahead, lift on up. And once again, center. Turn your toes out and slide down that wall. Goddess pose. So this is the moon salutation in slow motion. We're gonna come back on up and step the feet together. Walk, step, or some people like to jump feet together. Inhale, both arms come up and overhead. Into a side stretch. And then a side stretch the other way. And finally down center. All right, we're gonna repeat, go the other way. Big inhale, arms all the way up and overhead. Side stretch one way. Side stretch the other. Um, to center, bring hands down midline, walk step or jump your feet nice and wide, turn your toes out, sliding down like you're inside a toaster between two panes of glass, nice and flat, knees are swinging wide, you might even be able to pick up your big toes, and inhale, come all the way on it, now turn all 10 toes to the left because we're going the other way, and tip on over to that triangle pose. Beginner's hand is on the block on the inside arch side of the foot. If you're a little bit more experienced, hand can go to the outside. Knees unlocked for everybody. You make sure all 10 toes are pointing over there to the left. Finding that side body, that armpit, the side body rolls towards the floor. As you pick up that back heel, hop it wide. Back heel might not touch down. It does stretch straight back so that you get that calf muscle stretch. Working to pull both legs straight, pyramid pose. Take that block, tuck it underneath your knee, come into your lunge. Front foot wiggles wide, back knee tucks in narrow. If you're dumping pocket change out of your hip pocket, coming into a lunge. You're going to go to the inside arch side of that front foot. Maybe wiggle the front foot off the mat. You mind traveling here over to the light green zone. And extend your chest forward. Breathe. Pull that tummy in, back your hips up, back toes curled under, back knee lifts up, and you're gonna walk all the way around to the other side. You wanna leave one block on either end of the mat. I have to wiggle my feet around. Tuck that knee in narrow, dumping pocket change out of the hip. Hands come to the inside arch side of that foot, and that foot wiggles wide off the side of the mat. Advance your chest forward. Nice deep low lunge. 
with some padding underneath the knee, just hits your hips different. Gather your belly up into your body and work on straightening both legs. Popping your feet in a little bit more narrow, a little shorter. You can come into that pyramid pose. Back heel probably won't touch down. Let me just unlock. Switching hands. Block goes in that right hand, pick up that left heel, drop it in and down, and open up for your triangle pose. Supernatural. Knee unlock. So far, so good. Let's come all the way on up to standing. And turn out, drop down into that side. And inhale all, all the way up. Walk, step, or jump your feet together. Shoot your arms up overhead and go for that side stretch. One way. And then the other. And come all the way up. Now we're going to mess around with it. going to release those arms. Again, do make sure those blocks, we've got one on either end of the mat. Let's do it again. Inhale, arms up and overhead. Pick a side, any side, side stretch. And then side stretch the other way. Inhale to center, walk, step, or jump out. Toes are turned out as you squat down. Come all the way on up. Turn all 10 toes to the left just for fun. Let's tip over into triangle pose on one side. We're going to come on up and tip over to triangle pose on the other side. I'm going to mess around with the sequence here. Triangle pose on the other side. We're going to pivot, rolling this whole side body down to the ground, picking up that back heel, pivoting on the ball of the back foot. Have that block so your shoulders are level. Back heel can hop in a little bit more narrow, bring it a little bit wider for your pyramid pose. I'm going to bring this block with me. I'm going to inhale, come all the way up, windmill around, reposition those feet, and bow over for pyramid pose on the second side. That back foot can hop out a little bit wider. Pyramid pose. One block in each hand. Wiggle that back heel back, 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 back. Good. Set the knee down. And if the floor is hard, you can set it down on some padding. I want you to reserve these blocks because I got plans for the blocks. The back knee can come down to some padding if you need it. Hands on blocks. You're going to take this front foot and wiggle it across. We're going to go for pyramid uh, pigeon toe. So wiggle it across. You're going to drive your hips forward. And now the blocks, block or blocks, can tuck underneath your butt bone. Prepare it for a pigeon. Fill that gap, mind that gap. For me, it's my left hip bone. You can tuck it underneath your left hip bone. Back knee is still tucked in narrow. You're still dumping pocket change out of that hip. Okay. It was supposed to be a break in the weather. Almost. 
Not quite long enough for a field day, I guess. All right, hands underneath shoulders, tummy pulls in, lift your hips up, and now you get to spin the whole situation around to the other side. Padding underneath the knee, some blocks for underneath your sit bone, and we're gonna do pigeon pose on the other side. Settling in. All right, once again, hands beneath shoulders, tummy pulls in tight, back toes curl under. You're going to lift your hips up, pivot around to center. Find yourself in a wide legged forward fold. Hands touch something. Maybe hands are on block, maybe hands come all the way down to the floor. Toes turn in, heels kick out. Find yourself in a wide legged forward fold, melting forward. Perhaps you can put your elbows on blocks. Maybe you can put your elbows on the floor. How low can you go? Cross Rita Pado Tanasana, wide legged forward fold. Keep those blocks handy. Put those blocks underneath your hands. You're going to heel toe wiggle your feet in more narrow. Heels in, toes out. Notice I've got my heels as wide apart as the mat. Come on down, pop a squat. It's a wide squat. If your knees are not really that happy with it, you can take some of the load off by putting those blocks underneath your sit bones to make it a little bit more tolerable. If your knees just refuse to squat, you can do one block for each butt cheek, you can come down into that butterfly pose. So you do want to be able to walk after class. So either you're here in Baddha Konasana butterfly pose or you're hanging out in the squat, modifying the squat as necessary, blocks in use or not. And everybody's going to lean one way and swing the knee out wide. If you're in that Baddha Konasana, just pushing the knee wide, you're not pushing down, you're pushing out, swing it wide. And then shift and switch and turn out. Again, shift and switch and turn out. Maybe getting your toes if you're in the squat, getting your toes to point sideways. The point here is a big inner thigh stretch. And switch and shift and stretch. And then come to center. All right, you're going to make your way back on up to standing, however that works for you. If you can get up to standing without using your hands, bonus. Keep those blocks handy. And come on up to standing, however it works for you. Big inhale, arms come all the way up and overhead. And exhale, release. So we're going to take a moment to stand on these blocks and talk about keeping our hips level. Now, I am wearing a stripy shirt, so maybe you could see whether or not my hips are level by looking at the stripes. I can get them evened out. So we're gonna start by standing on blocks. And notice when you're standing on two matching blocks that your hips are level. But if you remove one of those blocks, put one foot down on the ground, and one foot stays on the block and both legs are straight, your hips are no longer level. And in order to level your hips, you have to take the, the descending, the sinking leg and soak it up into your pelvis. So here's my leg up in socket. Here's my leg out of socket. In socket, out of socket, in socket, out of socket. You're using your hip muscles, a little bit of abs, to level out your pelvis. You can do it on one side and then shuffle switch and try it on the other. 
Let's wake some of those hips up this morning, those hip muscles. And get a feeling for having your hips level, even when one leg is floating. All right, remove the blocks. Palms forward, great big shoulder shrug up. Back and down. Shift your weight over onto that right foot. Spin your left knee out to the side. Are your hips still level? Take a moment, even them out. Slow, small adjustments help keep you from falling over. So level hips as best you can. Standing knee is soft, unlocked. And foot goes against leg. Foot pushes against leg, leg presses against foot. Particularly that pinky toe side of the foot. Pinky toe side of the foot pushes against leg. You either want to be above or below the knee. Push on the knee. And check your hips, are they still level? Oh, and make slow adjustments. Small adjustments, otherwise you can fall over. Now, if you have a chair here, if you're falling all over the place, having that chair handy can help you with your balance. Take a moment, find your balance, get level hips, and then balance permitting, palms forward for that shoulder shrug, up, back, and down. You can grow your tree, taking your arms overhead. Virkshas in a tree pose. Breathe. And gracefully release, switch sides, standing on that left foot, spinning the right knee out to the side, foot goes against leg, leg goes against foot, standing knee stays unlocked, pushing foot against leg, leg against foot, level hips, challenging yourself to balance, bringing arms overhead. And breathe. We're going to repeat this tree pose a few times, adding in some variations. So come on down and work on the level one that we just attempted there. Or take it to the next level, again, standing on your right foot, spinning that left knee out to the side, maybe hiking that foot up above the knee. Now, skin sticks to skin really well. If you have loose, slippery pants, take them off. Pull them up out of the way so foot sticks to skin very well. Shoulders back and down, chest lifted. Standing knee is still soft. Balancing for your tree pose. If you've got really good balance, you can add in a bit of a side stretch, bending towards the bent knee. And breathing. When you bend over towards the bent knee, the foot pushes against the leg, the leg presses against the foot. Helps you pull in that core, abs, pelvic floor, and balance all that much better. And then come all the way on up and let's switch sides. Knees unlocked. Right knee turns out to the side, foot against leg, leg against foot. Maybe try it above the knee. Shoulders back, chest lifted. Level hips. Finding your balance. Breathing. And then for fun, maybe. Turn this into a side stretch variation on that tree pose. Mm. And come back to center. Sure, you are on mute, so I don't have to do so much editing here. All right, all right, let's do it one more time, each side. Shoulders back and down, chest lifted, I'm going for it. Standing on that right foot, turning that left knee out to the side. Hike it up. Some of you might be able to put that foot up in the hip crease for your half lotus or the Padmasana variation. Not me, but maybe you. Standing knee stays soft, going for that balance. Notice I've got the shoulder shrug back, the palm shining forward. I'm going to push the back of my hand against the knee. Really get that knee to turn out. Opening up into that side stretch. Gliding down on the inside of the leg. Maybe you can get your elbow on your inner thigh. And breathe. Still hitchhiking those shoulders down your belt. 
breathing. Big side stretch and a balance challenge. And then come all the way up. That's just a lovely side stretch. I just can't seem to get any other way, but it does require a bit of balance. <laughs> other side, so don't be shy about using that chair. Foot against leg, standing knee is unlocked. Get that foot up all the way as high as it's willing to go. Foot pushing against leg, leg pressing against foot. Gives you good, strong stability. Shoulders back and down. You might be able to slide that right arm into the inside of the thigh. Chair could be there for help too. Adding in that side stretch. And then come on up Ooh, and release. Now, let's do play with this chair. Parked it over here on my left side. I'll be standing on the right knee. Doing my best little Captain Morgan here. Put those up on the chair. So if getting the foot against your thigh and putting the elbow on the inside of the thigh wasn't working for you, well, now we're going to work it. Everybody can do it. Foot on a coffee table, foot on the chair. The foot is dialing in the direction of the pinky toe. So your knee is turned out. The standing foot also dials in the direction of the pinky toe. You're doing that squat. You are turned out like a ballerina. Elbow slides down on the inside of the thigh. Hooking your elbow on the inside of the thigh, that shoulder shrug down your back, you're hitchhiking. Arm comes alongside your ear and you're gonna go for a big side stretch. You might be able to climb down the inside of the leg, maybe even hook fingertips underneath the ball of the foot. Big side stretch. And breathe. When you find a little bit of stability, you can play around with arm circles like we did at the very beginning of class. The palm is down when it's in front. Palm is up when it's behind. Arm circle one way. And then maybe arm circle the other just to get a good feel for it. Notice how adding in the variation of arm circles changes the feeling of stretch in your side body. If you haven't already reversed the direction of that arm circle, don't forget to breathe. And then finally, we're going to come on up oh, and switch sides. Shoulders back, chest lifted, level hips as best you can. Captain Morgan style, foot on the coffee table, foot on a chair. Opening across the front of your pelvis. Right knee turns to the right, left knee turns to the left, dialing in the direction of the pinky toe, very open across the front of the body. Shoulder, elbow, everything slides down the inside of the leg. Pitch hiking. Top arm up and over. Big side stretch. Chairs there for balance sake. You might even be able to put the ball of your foot into the palm of your hand. And then you're so soft. And then play around with those arms with it. Arm circling one way and then arm circling the other. And then finally coming all the way on up and get your belt. Now you might have short enough leg, long enough arms enough hip mobility, flexibility that you can reach down, grab a hold of your toe, but just in case, have that belt ready to go. Because we're gonna do the same Captain Morgan move we just did. Knees unlocked, level hips as best you can. 
leg out and over to the side. Gonna lean on over, sliding down the inside of the leg. Two fingers, peace fingers can go around the big toe. If you're having a difficult time reaching the foot or you know you don't have long hamstrings, you can use that belt to help you last with the foot. You're gonna hold on hitchhiking stuff. All this pale skin with no tan, all of that is shining forward. So holding on, two fingers or the belt. Shoulders back, chest lifted, knee unlocked. Gonna work on finding your balance. Coming on up to standing and then maybe extending the leg. Or you might be here. Letting out a little slack on the belt. Wiggling the foot out, straightening the leg. Choosing your own adventure. Utita Asta Parangustafana. Extended hand to foot pose, balancing style. And then release, other side. Same idea. It's Standing knee unlocked, level hips, leg turned out, doing your best Captain Morgan, right knee to the right, left knee to the left. Shoulders are down on your back, pale inner armpit skin shining forward, holding on two fingers to the big toe or using the belt to help you lasso that foot. Standing knee is soft, trying to find some balance, maybe standing all the way up, maybe extending the leg. And breathe. And don't be shy. There's plenty of benefit here with foot on the coffee table and on a belt. It's all about opening up the hips. Maybe you don't have the hamstrings this morning, but you got the hips opening. You're still getting benefit from the foot. Now work on leveling hips if you can, if you're there. And release. Once more on each side. If you're able to do it freestyle, freestyle it starts off much like that tree pose, just hiking the foot up to groin, taking those two fingers around the big toe, knee is turned out, shoulders shrugged down, everything open out to the side and balancing. Three. And you do the other side. All the interme intermediate steps. You might be here doing your tree. You might be doing a higher tree. You might be putting your foot on the chair for Captain Morgan. You might be lassoing the foot. You might be extending the leg out on that chair. Or you're coming up for the grand finale. Utita Asta Parangustakma. Shoulders down, shift lifted. And then coming on down. Great big inhale. And exhale. Now, if you do have a chair, it is quite nice. You can put your hands on the back rest of the chair and step back for box pose. That's where your hips are directly over your heels. And eventually, ideally, ultimately, you have like a 90 degree bend, a corner at your hips and a flat tabletop surface to your back. Head is up between your arms. So if you were to bang your head side to side, your ears touch your bicep. If all that makes sense, you give me two thumbs up. You can spin your hands in the direction of the pinky fingers to make your shoulders more comfortable. Two thumbs up. You don't have a wall or a chair to put your hands on. The next version, it would be a down dog, which is where we're heading. So you can stay here and work this box pose or turn it into a downward facing dog, which is very similar to box pose. It's just tilted over a little bit more. Same deal. If you're doing your down dog, you can dial your hands in the direction of the pinky fingers, wrap the outer rim of your armpits around towards your face. Make sure your elbows are unlocked. 
You want to perk your sit bones up and out. You can bend your knees, lift your heels, and kick your butt up and out. Sit bones are sharp. Front ribs and belly are pulled in. And then we will all make our way down to the ground. Back to hands and knees. Inhale, head up, tail up. And exhale, arch your back for cat. Inhaling for cow. And exhaling for cow. I'm gonna work fast and forth through cat and cow a few more times. I am not gonna lie down on the ground today because it is wet. I'm gonna finish today's class with some cat and cow and then some seated stuff. I'll leave you to shavasanate on your own. So once you've done a few cat and cows, we're gonna come have a seat. And you might sit on the chair, you might sit on your block, you might sit on something. Want to go in full circle, finishing the way we began, simple crisscross applesauce, flesh pulled away from those sit bones, palms are forward for a great big shoulder shrug up, back and down. Inhale, take both arms up and overhead. And as you exhale, twist, pick a side, any side. Inhale to center. And exhale, twist the other way. Inhale to center, hands free. I challenge you, I dare you to switch legs without using your hand and twist again. And again, inhale to center and exhale twist. Inhaling the center, hands coming down midline. Thank you for joining me today. Namaste. Have a lovely day. Stay dry. I'll see you next time.